Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you all for joining us for our webinar today as we take a look at some SOLIDWORKS tips and tricks with our Senior Application Specialist, Ryan Beach. Those of you who have taken training with us before here at CAD Micro may already know Ryan, or you may remember him from running some of these tips and tricks webinars in the past. They are definitely always a fan favorite. As a reminder, today's session is part one of two, with the second half taking place tomorrow at the same time. That session will be a continuation of today's, and both sessions will be recorded and shared with you uh, via email afterwards. If you didn't re yet register for tomorrow's session, we'll send the registration link through the chat here in just a minute, so you should see it in your GoToWebinar panel, uh, and we'll also include that in, in our follow-up email tomorrow morning. In an effort to keep these sessions short and informative, we're going to try to keep it to about that 30-minute mark. That being said, feel free to type in your questions in the GoToWebinar panel as they come up, and we'll do our best to get to them at the end, if not today, then tomorrow. If any questions come up afterwards, you can always respond to the email you'll get with uh, the session's recording and let us know. All right, without further ado, I think I will pass things over to Ryan to get us started. Thank you, Jess. Hello, everyone. As mentioned, I'm Ryan Beach. I'm one of the Senior Application Specialists here at CAD Micro. I'm also CSWE. So I've gone through SOLIDWORKS World and I've collected as many of the tips and tricks and shortcuts as I possibly found. I found out a couple of new ones from a couple of days ago, which I did not know about, which uh, will be presented in this one. So without any further ado, let's get started. I've got 33 of them to do in 30 minutes. So I've, I've got to get moving fairly quickly here. So number one is the Windows key. So in your taskbar, if I just bring up my start menu really quick, if you use the Windows 1 through 9 key, it'll open up the, from what the first nine applications. So in this case, if I want to open up SOLIDWORKS right now, if I actually close this out, and I press Windows 1, it'll launch SOLIDWORKS. So instead of having to use the mouse, there's a little shortcut for you right off the bat there, just to get started. So hopefully everyone finds that one useful. So once SOLIDWORKS launches, I'll go ahead and jump to the next slide here. And next one is Power Trim. Enter key and then the D key and S key. So let's switch over here to SOLIDWORKS and let's create a new document here. So if I go Control N for new, we're going to start out with just a file right in here. And let's draw on this face right in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Sketch Normal 2. And as I start drawing out my lines in here, let's draw out another couple of lines. Let's go like this like this and let's go something like this and then sure it looks good so i'm going to do our trim and let's say i want to keep these outside ones right in here but now let's say i go too far and i trimmed away those two extra lines which i didn't want there's a small red dot that exists right where my cursor is right here and if i go back over that red dot that'll untrim the lines so I, again if i keep going back over that red dot now i can untrim what i've already trimmed so that's the first one right within here and now the next one is the ability to, to extend. So again, if I go over that, and there we go. So let's say, for example, here, I'm going to trim that and this guy right in here. And now if I click on that line and drag, I can trim, and in this case, extend up to that line in there. So again, I'm still in the trim command, as you can see in here. But what I'm able to do is if I click on this line and I drag it across, I can now, trim, I can now extend that up to that line in there. Next one is enter key. So for example, in here now, if I exit out of this sketch in here, and let's say in here I want to do a fillet command. Let's fill out this face. And let's say OK. Now if I hit enter key again here, it's going to bring up that fillet command again. So this is a great way again of reusing commands over and over and over again. It's also great for dimensioning too. So if I go back into the sketch here, and let's pull up that smart dimension. And let's say I want to dimension from here to here. And once I escape out of this and hit enter key again, now again, there is that dimension brought back for me right here. So that's the second one. Now the third one, you've already seen me use it here, which is the D key. So the D key, instead of always having to go up right here to exit out of your part to click OK or cancel, just press the D key and now you get it right where your mouse is. So again, it saves you from having to move your mouse around all over the screen. And now we can go within here for the quick shortcut, start a new sketch. And now instead of always having to go up here to pick our commands for circle, line, or anything else in here, you can press the S key, and now I can start drawing out my lines in here too. So again, there is our S key. And now with that S key too, if we want to customize it, we want to right mouse button up in here, click on customize, 
And then here now I've got our shortcut bars. So we can resize this, we can drag this along. We've got it for parts, assemblies, drawings, and sketches. We can also add in other ones in here too. So for example, I've added in one for convert entities. But now let's say, for example, I might want to add in another one for say fully defined sketch. So we can look, for example, in here, find one for a sketch, and there'll be an option somewhere in here if I can find it. We'll come back to this one later if I can't find it. Yeah, we'll come back to it later. And then we can add in, for example, fully defined sketch. So next is, a little bit of foreshadowing, is fully defined sketch. So say, for example, in here, I've got this sketch and I want to fully define it. Well, I can either try and manually dimension everything or under my display delete relations, there's a drop down arrow right in here. I've got fully defined sketch. And I want to click on this right here. Now I can specify my origin point. In this case, if I zoom in, it's this point up right in here. It's that pink dot. So maybe, for example, I want to choose my baseline point to be this point right here. So I will pick that point. And then for point 17, I want to make sure that I've got both of my dimensions coming from that edge up in here. So again, let's delete that one. Let's pick that point right down in here. Vertex 2, vertex 1. And now when I hit calculate, it's already fully dimensioned my sketch for me. So again, a great time saver instead of having trying to manually dimension everything, it'll do it for us automatically here. It's also useful too, because for example here, if I draw a line like this, I'm gonna hold down the control key, and then I'll draw another line like this, and another line like this, and so on and so forth here. And if these don't have any relations in them, I hope they don't. What I can now do, again, is use that same fully defined sketch. Click on Calculate. And now it's automatically added in that horizontal relation in here for me as well, too. So again, you can also use it for automatically adding in relations. Sketch Color, another useful one. So if you're working with sketch sketches, for example, and let's say you need to either reuse them or they're showing up in the assembly, for example, instead of having a sketch being as gray color, which is very, very hard to see. What we can do is, if I do a right mouse button in here, I've got sketch color. And now let's maybe make this sketch, uh, maybe not yellow, let's make it this orange color right in here. And now we can have visibility within our sketches. So now this sketch three, let's again change that sketch color and let's make that one, let's not make it blue because it looks like we're editing it. So let's make that this off color green. Hopefully here no one's colorblind and everyone can see that is a different color between these two here. So again, their sketch color, very, very useful, especially when you're working with sketches in assemblies. Number six now is dynamic sketch. So this one's really, really useful. So I've got two ways of showing it here. So the first way, let's, let me scroll and try and find that file which I just had opened up here a minute ago, if I can find it. So first way is using this arc equation method. So if I edit this sketch right in here, what you'll notice is I've got these two lines right here equal, I've got symmetry, so nothing too fancy is going on in here yet, except for I've got this equal to arc length. So the idea is, is that if I was to pull this line right here, I want to find out what happens when this gets wrapped or pulled around in here. So the idea is to find out as I adjust this length, what happens. So if I exit this right now, and if I enable instant 3D here, and I drag this, what you'll notice is, is that as I pull this line out, this line right here decreases. So the idea is to figure out what is the length that exists right in here on a sketch. So by using instant 3D and using that equal arc length, I can now figure out whatever that bent length is as this is going along. So hopefully somewhere along the way, everyone here will find this useful. Okay, let's see. Instant 2D, instant 3D. So I've already mentioned instant 3D. Instant 2D, so if I make a new part in here, let's go with this box. If I go into this sketch right in here, you'll click on this right here, and what you'll notice is if I go normal 2, let's turn on Instant 2D, you get this, where it automatically clicks the dimension right in here. And if you want to move it, you have to click off of it. Now, normally, at least for myself, I usually find this quite annoying. As soon as you click on it, it automatically changes this number. And then if you want to delete the dimension, this happens where you now get the blinking arrow and you hit enter key. And now you get a number that says minus 39,370, which is not what we want. And then we've got to hit escape, try and click somewhere over in here, highlight it, and then delete. 
so not ideal. So to turn that off, under your Sketch tab, you've got Instant 2D. And this is where, again, we can turn it on or turn it off in here. What Instant 2D is intended for, if I click on this dimension, is that if I grab this blue dot right here, I can drag this to various lengths in here. So that's the purpose of it. Generally speaking, I don't use this for sketches, so usually I turn off Instant 2D. Now, Instant 3D, this is kind of, can be kind of useful here. I've already shown you one example with a dynamic sketch. Another case is just modifying his box size. So for example, if I click on, let's say this face right in here, you should see this orange arrow. I can drag on this face. And now what I want you to notice is, is as I move this around here, what's happening is right now, is it's giving me currently 3.199. That's not very useful. So if you were to take your cursor and hover it over the ruler, you'll notice how it's now snapping to the exact measurements. So if you do like this idea of clicking and dragging, for example, if you hover your mouse over the ruler, it is a fast way of changing the dimensions around. And that's using Instant 3D turned on. Now, fillet expert and dynamic reference visualization. I'm going to do these two in reverse order. Actually, that's not. So next is fillet expert. So if we click on fillet, we'll all use this screen right in here. Showed us before, hit enter, okay. Hit enter again, we can bring up fillet command. That's one way of doing it. But the other way is to click on here, fillet expert. How are we doing here for time? Okay, I got 19 minutes. So if I click on fillet expert, I can do the same thing, where if I click on this space, let's say, okay, and I'm gonna do a right mouse button apply. And in this case, it's gonna try and do something funky because I just gave it a fillet size, which is quite, which is way too large. Oh, I figured it out, it's interesting. So let's do an undo. And instead of making that five, let's make that 0.5, click on that face. And now I can use the right mouse button to click OK. And then now if I rotate this around here, I can now want to click on maybe, let's say, this edge right in here. I've even got this connected option in here too. So again, instead of trying to pick edges manually, it's a great way of multi-selecting edges. And now instead of it being 0.5, maybe make it 0.75. Right mouse button, apply. So again, a really quick way of putting in multiple fillets within here too. Now, if I want to change a fillet, maybe I want this one to be different now. I can even change this fillet to now say 0.25. Hit resize. And now I'm able to resize my fillets in here too, assuming I don't do something really, really funky in here. And then when we're done, right mouse button, click OK. And in this case, I want to remove that face. So let's do that and hit OK. So that's fillet expert. Now. Dynamic reference visualization. When you install SOLIDWORKS, for whatever reason, this is turned off. So I'm going to turn these two off right in here so you know exactly what I'm looking at, which is how do we know here what is a parent and what is a child? Well, if you right mouse button up top in here, and if I go to dynamic reference visualization parent, it's a mouthful to say every time I say it, and dynamic reference visualization child, as soon as I click on a fillet, we now get these fantastic arrows at points saying, hey, fillet four is linked to fillet one also related to Boss Extrude. And again, if I click on Boss Extrude, we can now see what this is related to. And we can even see that Boss Extrude is starting on the front plane. So that's dynamic reference visualization. So you need the right mouse button up top in here. Make sure these two are turned on. So you'll need to do that for whenever you install 2020. OK, grid system, sketch numeric input, and shift click arc. So grid system, I'm going to make a new file in here now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start out here in the front plane. And let's just draw a rectangle. And this is something else, too, which I'm going to mention a little bit more as well, too. You'll notice right now how I'm switching between the right rectangle types. If I hover over right in here, I'm not currently clicking anything. If you press the A key, you can switch between your various types in here. So this works for both lines, circles, and arcs, for example, in here, too, and works for slots as well. So in this case, I also want to use my midpoint rectangle and have instead of my rectangle, which for most people is this style, I like my rectangles. So if I use S key, rectangle, I like it from midpoints. So there's a radio button in here. What we can do is now if I click and I drag, I now have my rectangle in here. So at numeric sketch input. So in here, if I type in 120, I can say tab 200. This is a great way of adding in dimensions on the fly. So to show you how to work with this, if I go up to System Options up top, 
And this is another useful one too. The search within system options is another useful one. And instead of trying to find numeric input, if you just search for numeric, for example, we can find it right in here. And you want to make sure that this, these two options in here are both turned on right in here. These two are very useful to have. So again, instead of trying to find it, just search for numeric and it'll come right up in here. Okay, so I mentioned grid system. So now I'm going to use the W key. I'm going to type right in here now grid. And you notice right now grid system's grayed out. So I need to exit out of my current sketch, press the W key again. If I type in grid, I now will see grid system. Now what I want to do is I want to specify my levels. And let's say I'll have three levels at, let's say, 1,000 millimeters. That looks fine. And let's say OK. So what that just did was that just created three sketches, right? That's now up in space, which is useful. But it also did something else. You also notice it now says surface bodies. So if we click right in here and I click show, it also made a surface body in here too. So this is great if we're working with weldments. So I'm going to delete my grid system in here. I'm going to go back to the sketch. I'm going to do something a bit more fancy with this sketch now. And let's see. So I've got this right in here, which is underdefined. So let's make sure that if I select my midpoint, I've got that coincident and fully defined. So now what I'm going to do is in here, I'm going to add in a couple of extra lines right in here now too. So I'm going to throw in this line, this line, and let's throw in this line in here this line in here, and let's repeat this right in here. OK, so that looks pretty good. I'm not going to worry about trying to make this symmetric. That's not too important right now. It's going to exit of this sketch. So now when I go back to doing my same grid system again, oh, if I exit out 3D grid, exit sketch anyway. Let's try this again. Grid system. Now when I select on the sketch, let's, instead of making this height 1,000, let's make the height, let's say, 200. 200. Then let's make this one right in here now 50. And now the reason for doing this is if I now say OK, what I want you to notice is, is that instead of it being equal spacing, it's taking my default sketch, moved it out 200, then I took my next one and said, oh, it's only 50 millimeters away. And that's the first part. Now, what I also want you to notice is that now if you look at my surface bodies folder, instead of it saying one surface, which you can see right there, we now also have services for right in here. So again, this should help out when you're working with your weldments, where we can use grid system to create this fancy grid to give us all these extra lines to start uh, generating our models in here. OK, and now shift click arc. So as soon as I go here, control new, it looks like I'm falling behind on time, so I've got to really pick up the pace right in here. As soon as I do a sketch, I want to do a slot. This is going to be the best way to show this super quickly. And I want to dimension the outside of slot. So if I go smart dimension, hold down shift key, then click on the one side of the arc, click on the other side of the arc, and I could dimension to the outside of the arc. So again, holding down shift, you can do a click, click, and now I can go to outside of arc. Let's see, derived sketch, OK. So now next step is here is derive sketches. So again, this can be really, really useful. So I'm going to take this sketch. I know it's overly simple, but we'll use it anyways. Where if I go insert and I look for sketch, there'll be an option in here for derived sketch. So you'll notice right now, if I try and click on it, it's grayed out. So what I need to do is I need to both click on a sketch and the plane. So maybe I'll pick on right plane. So now as soon as I go back to insert, you'll now notice derive sketch becomes available. And now what I can do is, now I've got this sketch over in here that's now linked to my original sketch. So as I modify this sketch in here now, and let's say, for example, in here, I'm going to throw in a circle. Let's make this maybe a little bit, move this around over here. Let's say, OK. You'll now notice it now copies that exactly over into the sketch in here. So derive sketch, really, really, really useful. Let's see, quick convert to construction, Alt-C. This one's another really useful one. This one I only learned just the other day. If I draw out this rectangle, let's see, am I on the right plane here? Yes. Try this again. If I want to draw out my rectangle, oh, let's go normal to my right front plane. There we go. So 
So I'm gonna go, here's my rectangle, but if I want this for construction, if I press Alt-C, that now turns my rectangle with my solid lines into construction lines. So what you need to do is, as long as your sketch is still highlighted, you can press Alt-C and that'll convert your lines to construction. So again, in here, instead of having to always click here, Alt-C. So really, really, really useful. Let's see what's next. Sketch normal to an edge, okay. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new part. And now what I wanna do is here, I want to draft, uh, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna create an off-center edge here. So let's do a draft. And let's apply a one degree draft. Let's make this one a little bit more. So let's pick this face. Let's go manual, let's pick this edge, and let's make this a 10 degree draft here if I try my draft once more. So draft, pick my face, face is the draft, and my neutral plane will be this one right in there. Okay, so now if I wanna create a sketch normal to that edge, if I click on this edge right in here, I can now click on sketch, what that's gonna do is it's gonna make a plane. And if I go normal to right now, I just made a plane right here normal to that edge. So if I go back over in here now, and let's rotate around to this one right here, and let's draw a rectangle out now. And now as soon as I go to do an extrude, and I say, okay, what you'll notice is, is that it just made that plane automatically normal to that edge. So that's using, again, what I did was I clicked on this particular edge right in there. And if I want a plane normal to that edge, just simply click on the sketch and it's already made the plane for us here automatically. And there it is right there too, by the way. So there's that plane and there's this plane in there. So it does it for us. Another thing I just learned the other day. Sketch expert. So if I go in a front plane right now, I'm gonna, just gonna throw on in here just a circle. And let's say circle. I'm going to use a fully defined sketch right in here and hit calculate. All looks good. And now I'm going to do this. We're going to say make these two in here equal to each other. So I'm going to say make equal, I'm going to make tangent. Now I've got a bunch of errors. So now I can either just highlight everything, delete, try again, or if I do a command search for sketch expert. And now I want to say diagnose. It's gonna try and find a solution in here. And in this case, you'll notice it's drawing out lines right in here saying, hey, remove this equals to and tangent here. And you also notice there's 22 other options in here you can go through and so it can solve and try and find what will make it here not overdefined anymore. In this case, I want option number one. So I'll click on accept and okay. So that's sketch expert. Let's see, fill it, repair missing edges. Okay, so I'm gonna make another new part in here. Let's go with front plane and let's use that S key again to draw a box. And let's throw in a couple of holes in here. Let's say that's one, good enough. And now let's do a right mouse button in here now. So if I hit escape and let's go extrude. And now I want to throw in a fillet right in here super quickly. So let's make that 0 0.05. I make sure to fill it small enough now. So I want to fill it that edge, that edge, and let's fill it that edge and that edge in here now too. And say, okay. So now I've got all these edges right in here now all filleted for me. But now what we're going to do is I'm going to go back to my boss extrude, edit my feature. And in this case, for my selected contours, I'm only going to pick this outside area in here. As soon as I click OK, and if I go into my fillet right now, and if I say edit feature, it now says missing edges. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna roll back in here now, grab this sketch, show it. Looks like I'm gonna go well over time here. So I'm gonna try and pick this up here as fast as I can. So I'm gonna just wanna show this body in here. I wanna pick these two in here now, and this is new feature for 2020, by the way, not this extrude cut. So I'm gonna do a cut through all. Let's make sure it's going the right way. And now I'm gonna go back down to my fillet again here. I'm gonna do a right mouse button, edit feature. And now I can do a repair missing edges. Click okay. 
and now it's repaired those edges which have been dropped right in here. So that's fill it. Okay, next is alt face for mates. So now what I want to do is I'm going to do a quick save right in here and let's throw this in the desktop. Call this test. So now let's go file, make assembly from part. And let's hit enter in here. And now another useful one too is instead of going insert again to grab the same part, if I can, we can do a control drag from either the tree in here or from within the graphics view to make a copy of the part. So now what I want to do is here, I just want to hide all my sketches. I want to make this back face here, to this front face right in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click right here. And then now if I go to S key, I'm going to click on mate. But now, as I mentioned, right, I want to make this back face. So if I press the alt key, then I'll hid that back face for me. So now I can click. And just like that, I was able to select and pick on that back face. So if I click OK, and if we inspect this mate right in here now, what you'll notice is, is that by pressing the Alt key, I was able to pick that back face without having to rotate around. So again, if I want to do this with these two in here, if I click on this face, let's click on mate. Again, hover with this face in here, press Alt, that front face has been hidden. I can now pick that back face. And now maybe let's say this has got a distance. And let's say OK. So that's Alt. Alt to hide faces temporarily when you're doing mates. Next is isolate and then saving it too. So say, for example, in here, I want to take a look at only these two components in here. But I need to hide this, for example, just to take a look at what I'm trying to do. So if I pick, let's say, this one, this one. And now let's do the command search for isolate. And now let's say I want to save this out as a view. So instead of just sitting isolate, I'll call this one now as, uh, as a cleaned view or view one. You can name it whatever you want. So now I hit exit. We've got all three again. But what we can do is in here, if I right mouse button on this arrow where I'm currently indicating to, I can now switch between my views to show hidden in components in here. So this might be great if you want to hide show toolbox components or you want to look in at a really complex part of the assembly really, really, really quickly. OK, variable pattern instances. So I'm going to delete this guy in here. Let's delete this guy right here. And let's switch back to that display state. And now let's go linear component pattern. Pick my direction right in here, which will be that face. Let's specify this set as three. Gives a total amount right in here now of five instances. And components of pattern, this guy right in here. So now I've got this right in here. And what I can do is if I go further down, I can go into my modified instances. And you'll see this purple dot right in here. So if I click on this dot, I can click on modify instance. We're now instead of that being at nine inches, be able to make this now at 9.5. Click OK. And so now if I rotate normal to my view here in the side, it should be my right view. You'll now notice these ones are all evenly spaced, but now this one is not evenly spaced in here. So next is Shift C. So for example, in here, if you're ever digging through your tree, and let's say we've got this expanded out in here and I want to collapse it. Click in your graphics view in here, press Shift C, allows us to collapse our tree. So again, if you ever got a tree expanded in both parts or assemblies, press Shift C will allow us to collapse it. If you want to expand it, for example, in here, if I click on the asterisk, for example, so I picked on this test one. And now if I hit the asterisk key, and now that gives me a full expanded tree of everything inside of that part in there too. Now, Weldman, this one's really useful. Again, I just learned the other day. So we're for drawing line up, drawing line down. So what I want to do is I'm going to take this line. I'm going to draw this line up like this and draw this line down. And at first, we might think, OK, well, sure, what's that going to do? But this is actually really, really cool once I figure this out. So if I click on my Weldman, go structural member here, and I want to choose, let's pick my ANSI inch, angle iron, one by one. Looks like I'm going to be going a little bit over time here. So I'll try and wrap this up as much as I can. And instead of doing this in one group, so I want to pick this one for this group. Now I'm going to say new group. And wait, it's going the other way. So let's send me check that. So in this case, I drew one line up, one line down. So let's do another sketch here on a front plane. And this is a more typical way of doing it, right? We just draw a line up. Let's draw another line right here back up. 
Let's exit out of my sketch. Let's go back to my weldments in here again. Click on my structural member. And let's pick on this one. And now let's say new group. Pick on this one. And what you'll notice is these two are now in the same direction. So what's going on here, which is really, really cool, is that Torx is actually being intelligent where by drawing, for example, this line up and then this line down, it then knows, oh, okay, you want these to be facing a certain way. So now, as soon as I go into my weldments, structural member again, pick on that line, and then new group, this line, we now get them going in opposite directions. Okay, next is uh, the purple dot. So I'm gonna make another new part in here. Let's see, how am I doing here for time so far? Looks like I'm going to be over here just by a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to do a sketch right in here. I'm going to do my line. I'm going to transition here into an arc. And let's transition back out here into a line. So now I'm going to exit the sketch, go over back into my weldments, click on my weldment, go to my structural member. And if I pick on this in here for these three segments, and I click OK, Right now, I've got a total of a cut list of three separate bodies, but we know that what we can do is we can bend this, maybe not this exact one, but we can bend this and this should be one singular piece, not three pieces. So back in my edit feature, and then there's an option right here, merge segment bodies. So you can use this now. If I click on this, you'll now notice now I've got a cut list. If I go to my properties, We've got a cut list length in here, a total length of 10.455. And if we're to measure that guy, that guy, that guy, and if we measure from the correct edge, we'll then see 10.455. Okay, now what we can also do with the purple dot here is if I draw another couple of lines in here, so I'm just gonna throw a line up and let's throw this line across and let's throw this one right here back down like so. And let's drag that up and let's scale and scale that up right in here too. So now what I want to do is in here within my weldments, click on my weldment, and now I want to pick that one, that one, that one. And there's this purple dot right in here. If I click on this purple dot, I can change my trim order right in here. So if I had a more complex corner, I'd be able to change it. And then I can also change this right in here too to also be the butt constraint right in here as well, instead of it being that mitered corner. So in this case, I want this one to go that way. And then now by clicking on that purple dot, right, we're able to modify the end condition of our weldment in here. Structure system. This came out in 2019, is incredibly useful. Absolutely love it. So if I go in here, I've got this crazy looking document right in here. I'm not gonna go through this whole thing, but the idea is that we can make something really, really complex like this really, really fast. So I'm gonna give you the really short version of this right here. So I'm gonna delete all of this stuff. Let's delete that and that in here. So from this sketch right here, we can make that entire complex system here. So I bring this right around. And if I go and set into structure system, which you wanna do in your tab, the right mouse button, enable a structure system, and then click on primary member. And in this case, I want to choose and here, a reference, what is it? I think it's point member length. That's the one I want to memory serve. And I want to go up to plane. So in this case, what I want to do is if I click on this point, this point, and now I'm going to pick my up to plane, be that plane right in there. And if I want to pick my direction, maybe I'll have this go on an angle. And so getting a, some idea for context of what I'm doing, I'm going to go into my profiles right in here, grab this W section. And I want to grab this one right in here. What you'll notice is that if I delete this, we can now choose this to flip our direction, whatever else. So again, just by having a couple of points in a plane, we can now start to do some weldments in here. And what's also very really cool is that by using secondary member, I now want to say in here, hey, let's link this guy to this guy. I've got to have some members who's going to cross. And now all I'm going to do is it's going to pick on my planes. And just like that, I now have got these four appearing right in here. Click OK. And then now, as soon as I go into here, and you'll notice this top one right now, currently for my profile, is not centered correctly. So I can go back into my profile, go click on my pierce point in here, and now I can pick that top point right in there. 
Let's see if that worked. Looks like it did. Hit OK. And as soon as I go to access, it, I can exit this out. I want to choose right in here. I want a full contact planar trim. Click OK. I know it's figured out all the trimming for me right in here. And so that structure system in, in a nutshell in there. Push pin. So you'll notice so far I've been hovering up here just trying to get this to appear and not disappear on me. So all you have to do right here is click on his little push pin and that will keep this from collapsing on you all the time. Now command manager, next one's custom tabs, where I strongly recommend everyone should go in your command manager in here, tabs. If you're going to customize, well, you'll notice is there's an option here for a new tab. So now maybe I want to say new empty tab, I'm going to call this custom one. And now I can add in all sorts of our own commands in here too. So maybe for example, I want to pull in quick snaps, uh, I don't know, 2D to 3D, and then let's say maybe assemblies, just for example. And so now I've got this custom tab that now exists right in here. Command search, I've been showing this one the entire time. W key activates the command search and you can search for commands up in here. And I've got three more actually, quick measure. So if I click on this face right in here, if I rotate around, hold down shift key, we will notice if I zoom in, go down to right in here, let's see, if I keep going down, where is it here? Okay, it will give me the normal distance by just by clicking on two faces right in there. And this works for both parts and in assemblies. So again, just use by using that multi-select my faces between here and then let's say over here, we then get our distance as case 0.34. Tree display state names. Okay, so if I switch back over to my assembly right now, what you'll notice is I got this scroll bar that exists right in here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna collapse the tree, so Shift C, but I still have got this scroll bar in here. To turn that off, what we're gonna do is go right mouse button up top under tree display, show display state names, uncheck that, and now that scroll bar that existed right here is now gone. So again, right mouse button up top, tree display, show display state names. If you guys missed anything, by the way, as I'm flying through this, there will be a video where you can find it afterwards and then hit pause. Show all hidden components. Last one. So in here, if I hide this one, this one, this one, there is shift tab, where if you hover my mouse over, I can show stuff. But there's also, and I learned this one the other day too, control shift tab. And now you can temporarily see everything and then pick which ones I want to have shown and which ones I want to have hidden in here. So again, if I have something hidden, let's say here, here, and here, control shift tab. Now it shows me these components in here. Okay, and I think that's all I got. So is there any questions from anyone? Awesome, thank you, Ryan, that was great. Um, I haven't seen any questions come through just yet, and we are just about a, a little bit over time here. Um, so I think we'll wrap it up for today. That being said, uh, if any questions do arise about the, the tips and tricks that we covered today, definitely reach out and let us know, and Ryan would be happy to answer those questions for you. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we are uh, going to be going through session two tomorrow. Um, you'll receive recordings for both sessions after the fact, regardless of whether you've attended both live or not. Um, so please keep an eye out for our email tomorrow that'll include today's recording, as well as links to some of the other upcoming webinars we have scheduled. I also wanted to mention that if you do have some favorite SolidWorks tips and tricks that we haven't covered today or don't cover tomorrow, we would love to hear from you. If you'd like to share any of those with us, please reply to the GoToWebinar email that you get tomorrow or reach out to your account manager or directly to Ryan if you, if you have his contact information. Uh, and we will get those over to Ryan so he can continue continue to build out some uh, nice content for us to share with our SOLIDWORKS user community. Once again, thank you, Ryan, for sharing some of your favorite tips and tricks. And thank you to all of our attendees for spending a little bit of your Wednesday afternoon here with us. Please stay safe and stay healthy. And we hope to see you all back here again tomorrow. Thank you. Bye-bye.